when there are some people who continuously seek sexual experiences and are constantly all the time aroused, this is generally the result of trauma. Hello, and we say a fantastic day to you. We are the Freddy and Cat, so we ask you how can we be of service to you now? It is a fantastic day, yes. Nice to be talking to you. Um, I want to ask about promiscuity. All right. It used to be sort of very badly, and um, these days people, some people say that's good. What is, what is your view on promiscuity? Is it good? Is it bad? You decide. Does it help people or does it harm people? That's another thing. Of course, when it's harmful, it can lower your vibration. If it's helpful, it can raise your vibration. That's it. When it comes to the idea of your sexuality, it is raising your vibration when it is done with consent, with awareness, when both people involved enjoy themselves. Higher vibration expressions of sexuality involve a deepening emotional connection between people. Of course, it can still be a very high vibrational experience if there is no emotional connection, but both people experience mutual joy and mutual satisfaction. That is just well and fine. So it's kind of a case by case, person by person. Yes, and the simplest way to understand is does it benefit both people involved or all people involved? Are the intentions clear? Are there positive effects or are there any negative consequences to such an act? If there are no negative consequences and everybody enjoys themselves, why not do it? Yeah, in, in human design, um, there are different characteristics for different charts, but in general, like the fifth line, a fifth line personality is more likely to enjoy sex with strangers. All right. Whereas a, a fourth line personality in human design is more family and friends, and then a family or friends <laughs> could turn into a partner at a later date. Is this, is this true, you think? If that is a permission slip that you choose to believe in and it works for you, then that can be true for you. I don't know. Well, it was an interesting perspective when I came across human design and it made me look at the world differently, that each person is unique. Exactly. Every person is unique. And also every person will be attracted to unique permission slips, whether it is human design, astrology, the I Ching, the Neogram, and so on and so forth. If it resonates for you at a given time, there might be information to glean from it. But don't put yourself in a box because of something that you've learned from a horoscope or any such reading. Allow yourself to adapt to changing situations and remember that ultimately you decide who you are. Nothing is predetermined beyond the soul agreements that you came in with. And all of those are up for changing to your own preferences at any point in time. Yes, you, you spoke of um, like partners, sexuality with two or promiscuity with two. But what about more than two? What about orgies and things like that? Are they inherently uh, case by case again? It is case by case, absolutely. But who? I mean, these things used to be sought to be satanic in some way, but they could be actually spiritual for particular people at particular times. Yes, absolutely. And this was a idea that is very limited to consider it satanic or any such thing. This was a regression because at points in time, those experiences were more commonplace. They were part of life. Surely going back in history to the very first societies, um, there, there were practices that 
would be very shocking to the modern world. But um, I think sexuality and promiscuity were more part of the tribal framework yes. of, of mankind in the early days. Yes. Do you, I mean, can you actually see that with your ability to look through time? Can you actually see what took place? Yes, this was very much a part of different experiences around your world, different points in time. Every culture adapted to human nature in different ways and came up with their own structures, with their own belief systems, with their own permission slips. So we cannot speak broadly, but we do say that absolutely sexuality was less inhibited at points early in your history and became more inhibited with certain breaks at which people became more open and then became more closed and open and closed. Though at this time, you are leaning more into a openness that will remain as you are entering into a new time where you are going beyond the negative belief systems and the limitations of the past. But that doesn't necessarily mean that your world will be absolutely promiscuous. Can you explain that? Well, what you consider hypersexual is generally a response to having trauma, having an overstimulated nervous system that manifests as constant arousal constant searching for some form of pleasure. Sexuality is one of the most easy to grasp for, for some people, for those who don't feel confident and don't feel attractive. Most likely they will addict it to things like food, entertainment, or drugs. But for those who have access to sexuality, this is one of the easiest and most uh, rewarding things to addict to from a perspective. And when there are some people who continuously seek sexual experiences and are constantly all the time aroused, this is generally the result of trauma, of some sort of negative belief that they have internalized that causes them to feel overstimulated much of the time, and they use the grounding effect of touch and sexuality as a way to remedy this issue. But ultimately what they're really looking for is the satisfaction of deep connection, is the satisfaction of uniting more completely with other beings, is the satisfaction of being genuinely validated, genuinely held, but because that sort of an experience requires a deep inner evaluation of oneself and one's beliefs and a process of total transformation, generally people shy away from such processes and instead they stay in the loop of seeking new sexual partners to essentially deal with the effects of their own negative beliefs. So even with consent, it, it could be um, a problem. It could be that someone has some issues to resolve. It's a problem if you say it's a problem, though it's a limitation. Yes, it's a limitation. It prevents people from getting to a deeper level of self-acceptance and transcendence, you could say. Mm -hmm. And what do you see for the future timelines for the way uh, our planet is likely to go in the future? Because open contact and technological advancement and so many other things will bring about a rapid acceleration in the development of human consciousness. And this will bring more people to feel genuine greater levels of intimacy with each other. There will be less of a need for these sorts of hypersexual expressions, though for periods of time 
those who were very repressed because of their culture will go through that evolutionary phase you might call hypersexuality. You will see those who have been very repressed going through that unresolved expression of their sexuality. So, no, it won't ever go away. But again, as people move into genuine higher vibrations of true love and connection, they won't be so drawn to hypersexuality. But again, promiscuity is a very vague word. And that idea might still continue without that hypersexual backing. You might experience that many people still enjoy the idea of anonymous yet consensual sex. They still might enjoy the idea of many partners. They still might enjoy even the idea of remaining single but still enjoying sexual interactions. Many things that were considered taboo will be normalized, but there won't be, again, that addictive rush behind it for those who are really awakened. However, more people will enjoy deep levels of intimacy and connection in one way or another. Okay, that's great. I've only seen you'd like to add on this topic. That will be all. Okay, well, thanks very much. Oh, thanks to you as well. Cheers. <laughs> Spaceship of Babel, we are guiding through the stars on a five year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. A celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you both hear us coming as we whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here, but we won't be as we whisper in the dark.